Too many days in the darkness Without a glimpse of the light Running tired and broken and scared But I swear I'll never give up the fight I see you broken and beat Head pulled down over your eyes Every part of you wants to surrender but Darling, you were meant to survive
with doubt and dismay you are smitten. You think there's no chance for you none. Why the best books haven't been written, the best race hasn't been run, the best tune hasn't been played yet. Cheer up for the world is young, but the best jobs haven't been started, the best work hasn't been done. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 2021 Sherelle McMahon Medal. My name is Pete Laser. Once again, a pleasure to be your host this evening. May we begin by acknowledging traditional lands on which we meet all over Australia, and for where we may be watching this evening. We pay our respects to elders past, present, and emerging, and we extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who are watching tonight. We would have loved to come together to celebrate the season that was in person and celebrate together with the team. But unfortunately, COVID-19 continues to hassle us throughout this year. And unfortunately, it means that we are all watching from various parts around, not just Melbourne and Victoria, but Australia and the world. So wherever you're watching from, in your living rooms or around your home, a very warm welcome. I trust that you are comfortable, warm, safe and healthy and enjoy an evening as we celebrate the 2021 Melbourne Vixens Suncorp Super Netball season. So many of our guests of honour are joining us here this evening, and we will have a look throughout the course of the night and catch up with quite a few of our athletes as we go. But if we're going to start with the Sherelle McMahon medal for tonight, we should have a look around and speak to the lady who has the honour of this award being named in her honour, and it is Sherelle McMahon. Sherelle, I'd love to cross to you now and find where you are and say good evening to you. She says you're dressed absolutely beautifully, as always. Who are you watching with this evening? It's all a little bit different, isn't it? Thank you, Pete. Yeah, it is very much different. Although I was watching the Sherelle McMahon medal in the same way last year, unfortunately, when the team was up in Queensland. But I'm just here with my husband and my kids, but I've locked them away in the back room, so hopefully we're clear. How does it feel that, unfortunately, the celebration together isn't happening this year, nor last, however... Every year, the Sherelle McMahon medal just grows in stature. How does it feel to have this medal name in your honour? Oh, it's, it is a huge honour, Pete. Um, this club has a very rich history that goes far back beyond uh, before the Vixens began. Um, we've got wonderful women and people who have been around this club that's grown it into something that's really, really special. And while this year was obviously a little bit of, of a challenge in different ways for this club, I've got absolute faith that the group next year will, will step up and put some really good wins on the board and, and change the fortune for, for the club next year. Certainly hope so. Thank you so much for lending your name to this prestigious honour. Great to have you here this evening, all dressed up, unfortunately, with nowhere to go, as we all are at the moment. But thank you, Sherelle. Great to check in and we'll hear from you a little bit later on. Our captain has also joined us, of course, Kate Maloney. Kate, where does it find you? Who are you watching with this evening? Uh, I'm back at my family house and have been here since we returned from Brisbane. So I'm with my mum and my dad watching tonight. Uh, in the comforts of home, there's nothing wrong with that. They'd be very proud of you, of course, winning the medal last year. How do you think you might fare this year? Oh, look, Pete, I'm not too sure. I think it's going to be a close one tonight. Okay, keeping a lid on it, very un-Kate Maloney-like, but dressed to the nines and looking spectacular as always. Wonderful job you've done both on and off the field this year. So thank you so much, Kate, for joining us as well. Now, Liz Watson, unfortunately, couldn't join us on court this year, but is going to join us this evening. Liz, very unbiased from you. Talk me through how you're going this evening. How's the recovery going and what are you looking forward to seeing tonight? 
Um, yeah, recovery is going really well. I was very lucky to go away with the group and be able to do that with them. So um, very fortunate to do that. And I think um, Kate does say it's going to be very close, but I think she's got a great shot at um, taking down her second medal tonight. And just quickly for all the Vixens fans out there, we always wish you well. We know that your rehab is a work in progress, but you're dressed up tonight. You're ready to go. What are you looking forward to for 2022? I know we're going to celebrate everything from this year tonight, but what are you looking forward to getting back out on the court? I think it's just getting back out there and playing. I have missed the competition and actually playing the game. So that's going to be really exciting. And I think um, the girls are probably, you know, really hungry to go out there next year and I guess, um, you know, have another great year. We look forward to it. We just can't wait to see you back out there, Liz. Thanks so much for joining us. And thanks for being part of the Melbourne Vixen setup this year as well. Great to see so many of our wonderful athletes, their families, the support staff, the coaches as well, joining us for the 2021 Cheryl McMahon Medal. And we will cross to many of our athletes throughout the course of the evening. There are some special guests who are also with us tonight. And we'd like to recognise those special guests who are joining us from home as well. Netball Victoria President, Kiralee Zimmerman and board members, Chief Executive Officer Rosie King, OAM, and all our staff at Netball Victoria and the Melbourne Vixens. Netball Australia representatives joining us tonight, Chair Marina Go and CEO Kelly Ryan. Great to have the support of Netball Australia this evening. Australian Netball champion, of course, Melbourne Vixens legend, and who we spoke to a little bit earlier on, Sherelle McMahon. Melbourne Vixens patron, Joyce Brown, OAM. Melbourne Vixens head coach, Simone McInnes, OAM. The Minister for Tourism, Sport and Major Events, the Honourable Martin Pakula, and Minister for Multicultural Affairs, Community Sport and Youth, the Honourable Roz Spence. Also, a very warm welcome and a thank you to all our valued partners, not just for joining us tonight, but for your support throughout another challenging year. Deakin University, Origin, McCafe, Nissan, Woolworths, Puma, Victorian Institute of Sport, HCF, Flight Centre, EFM, Cadbury, City of Melbourne, Two Times U, American Tourister, CMS Australasia, Gilbert, Jetport, Strappet, Hampers with Bite and BCNA. Thank you so much for all of your support throughout what has been another challenging year. To all of our beloved members and supporters, you are the lifeblood of the Melbourne Vixens, and without you, there simply isn't the most popular club in the land, if not the world. So thank you to our wonderful members and supporters. We only got to a couple of games live this year. We can't wait for 2022 to hear you in the stands. But thanks for joining us tonight. We trust that you'll enjoy your evening. And, of course, to our guests of honour this evening, who have spoken to a couple of already, the Melbourne Vixens team, the athletes, squad members, coaches, support staff and their families and all the support that goes around making them the elite athletes that they are. Welcome to you and please enjoy your evening tonight. Great to have you here from wherever you are in Australia. Before we get into presenting awards for this evening, it's my pleasure to welcome the Netball Victoria and Melbourne Vixens president to say a few words, ladies and gentlemen, Kira Lee Zimmerman. Thanks, Pete. I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which this event takes place and wherever you are all watching from tonight. I am currently on Wurundjeri country. I would like to pay our respects to elders past, present and future and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people present today. There is no doubt that this season didn't turn out the way we had hoped in more ways than just on the court, but there is still plenty to look back on and celebrate. We managed to sneak in five games at John Kane Arena bringing netball back to Melbourne and our fans after 18 months. To hear a Maloney or MJ come on bellowing across the stadium is something we will never take for granted again. We broke our membership record for the third year running. And in such a trying year, this is a testament to the athletes and the connection they have with their fans, but also to the passion and support of those dedicated members who ride every game with the team, whether in the arena or at home. To those members, many of whom are watching tonight, we cannot thank you enough for getting behind our team. Your commitment to our club and the players is what makes this the greatest club in the league. With phone calls to some of you personally and member exclusive Zoom events, 
the players wanted to show their appreciation of you in whatever way they could. Hopefully in 2022, we'll be able to show that appreciation in person, albeit socially distanced, at many events across the year. To the Vixens, the challenges you faced and overcame as a team is something much bigger than netball. In an effort to dodge lockdowns and restrictions and to keep the season going, you all showed maturity beyond your years and commitment to the sport and your fans that we're very proud and appreciative of. To recap the last few months as a Vixen, text message, pack your bags, we're leaving, fly to Brisbane, team meeting downstairs in five, pack your bags, we're leaving, bus to sunny coast, team meeting, Zoom meeting, team meeting again, pack your bags, we could be leaving, we are leaving, text message, pack your bags, we're going to Adelaide or Queensland, Adelaide it is, team meeting, we're going to Melbourne for 24 hours and you can't see your families, Team meeting, we're now going to Brisbane. Team meeting, we're going to Melbourne. Two weeks in quarantine and now you're home. It's not easy losing, let alone away from your support network. So while the scoreboard may not have said it, the commitment and sacrifices you have all put into this season places you at the top of the ladder. I know there were many laughs, plenty of tears and probably the odd expletive here and there. You would have seen a side of each other that you've never seen before. The way you've conducted yourselves through all of this enables you to walk away from this season with your heads held high. You got through this as a, as a group and you're all still smiling. On behalf of the board, Nepal Victoria, your members and fans, I thank you Vixens, players and staff for the, de the dedication to this season. You've really showed us what it means to be fearless and we know next year you'll be back. Thank you. Thank you, Kiralee. Great to have you here this evening, albeit virtually. Kiralee Zimmerman, the Netball Victoria President. As Kiralee mentioned, 2021 season was not exactly what we had hoped for, both on and off the court. We thought that 2020 had thrown us some challenges. And even though 2021 had glimpses of normality along the way, there's still a number of lockdowns and plenty of last minute pivoting. And as we just heard from Kiralee, messages, Zoom meetings, flights, quarantine. It was not an easy journey. So let's take a look at behind the scenes at the season that was and the many travels that our Vixens players travelled this year. Always great to see what the team gets up to and just have a little glimpse behind the curtain at the behind the scenes footage, especially in a year like it was this year. We've also got a special message tonight from the Minister for Ag uh, Multicultural Affairs, Community Sport and Youth, the Honourable Ros Spence. Ros, it's over to you. I'm delighted to have the opportunity to be a part of tonight's announcement of the Sherelle McMahon Medal, awarded to the Vixens' most valuable player. 
this year saw a continuation of the challenges of last season for each of you as players. Congratulations also to the club and Netball Victoria for your perseverance despite the challenges posed by the coronavirus pandemic. Tonight, I'd like to congratulate this year's winners. Enjoy the evening and celebrate your success. I'd also like to thank Sherelle McMahon, the namesake of tonight's award, for her contribution to the club. One of the greatest pleasures of my role as Minister for Community Sport is championing women in sport. That's why I was delighted to see in recent days the appointment of Sherelle as Cricket Victoria's new head of female cricket. It's another strong and potent message that our female athletes are outstanding leaders on and off the field. Thank you to the Melbourne Vixens for being such important role models to so many, inspiring the next generation of netballers. And to everyone, enjoy the night. Congratulations. Thank you to Minister Spence. Always wonderful to have the support of government. This year, season 2021, saw four debutantes for the Melbourne Vixens. And we thought, what better way than to acknowledge them this evening as new members of the Melbourne Vixens Club. Please join me in welcoming our newest Melbourne Vixens Club members. Club member number 54, Kalia Stanton. Great to have Kalia join us from the other side of Australia. Congratulations, and we trust that you are recovering well after surgery as well. Club member number 55, Hannah Mundy. What a fantastic inaugural season from Hannah, a wonderful mid-quarter, and the future is looking very, very bright. Melbourne Vixens club member number 56, Ruby Barkmeyer. Ruby certainly flourished when she got a chance on court. We look forward to the shooting sensation continuing in many years to come. And Vixens club member number 57, Rani Samerson. Who will forget that amazing debut match, but it is only the start of many things to come. Congratulations to all of our official debutantes and newest Melbourne Vixens club members. We'd also like to take this opportunity to acknowledge our squad members who have put an amazing amount of effort, an incredible season of training and work throughout the year. So please, albeit virtually, please put your hands together for Taylor Honey, Jordan Kranzberg, Sasha McDonald, and Gabby Coffey. They are our four training partners who have worked just as hard as all of our Melbourne Vixens squad members as well. Well, ladies and gents, as you know, we were able to celebrate a number of milestones throughout the season. She joined the Vixens at the start of the year and what a journey she's had so far. Congratulations on 50 National League games to Kalia Stanton. Kalia brings so much enthusiasm to the team, an infectious and positive energy. Congratulations on 50 National League games to Kalia Stanton. Round 13 saw us celebrate Kate Eddy's 50th National League match. Kate's a much-loved character of the club, with a bubbly nature felt by all. She had to overcome some setbacks throughout her career, but has also been part of the highs of the sport as well. Here's to many more dynamic deflections and intercepts to light up the crowd. Congratulations, Kenny. There they are, looking fantastic on screen tonight. 50 National League matches for Kalia Stanton and Kate Eddy. We also had the privilege of celebrating 100 National League matches for two of our absolute superstars at either end of the court. This player was born to be on the big stage. Fan favourite Maui Kumwenda celebrated her 100th match this season. MJ is a true competitor, a passionate performer and a loyal teammate. We're so proud of everything that she's achieved to date. A true inspiration both on and off the court for our Vixens family and beyond. It's been a great privilege to have MJ a part of Vixen. I love now that I see the confidence and her voice and her, her leadership within the group. You just realise how lucky we are to be here in Australia and to be playing and just how grateful she is for this opportunity. She is such a bright and bubbly girl. Playing with her is, yeah, super special. She's one of the loudest, most vocal girls on our court, so we absolutely love MJ.
Simply one of our favourites. Let's have a quick chat with MJ. Here she is. MJ, 100 National League games. Congratulations. How does that feel? Unfortunately, Sorry. I think you might be on mute there, MJ. We just need a little bit of unmuting going on on the computer. There we go. We're going to sort this out. MJ, let's go again. How does it feel to play 100 National League games? Uh, it was great to play 100 games. And I just wanted to thank uh, my teammates, uh, coaches, and everyone who has been supporting me through to reach this far. Thank you. We've heard, we've heard your story many, many times. And I mentioned earlier that you were born to play on the big stage. Of course, the player of the Netball World Cup in 2015. How, how much are you looking forward to a pro Vixens crowd, a big crowd at John Kane Arena next year? Uh, yeah, we had like a very hard season this year, but I'm looking forward to, um, to win more games next year. I can't wait because um, I'm very proud to play for Vixens because when I was young, I was like, oh, I want day one to play for Vixens. So this is like my gym team. So yeah, I can't wait to play next year. So it would be great. And, and, and we know that you don't sleep if we lose. So we need to keep winning to make sure that you can sleep well <laughs> during the week. Just a quick one, MJ. Who's your tip to win the Sherelle McMahon medal tonight? Myself, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, it's a joke. Uh, I'm happy for everyone to win and I'll be proud of my sisters. It's not a joke. You are every chance to win tonight, MJ. We may well no, I'm be joking. speaking later I'm on. Joking, <laughs> no, we know you're a very humble champion. Don't worry. But we may well be speaking later in the night. Thanks so much for joining us and congratulations once again on 100 National League games. There's another 100 match milestone and this for one of our defensive queens. What a journey. An incredible 100 matches it has been for Jo Weston. From heartbreak to redemption to representing the green and gold, Jo has done it all in her netball career. Great defensive pressure. Outstanding from Weston. Weston, the rebound. Super important for Joe and myself to have a strong bond and I think that is something that adds great value to our on-court relationship. I just go out there with confidence knowing that I have such a strong partner next to me on court. She definitely encourages me to be more aggressive on and off the ball. Just her discipline, her work rate, and but her composure and control now and her ability to work as part of a unit has been outstanding. with our defensive queen. There she is, not even concentrating. As always, Joe Weston, 100 matches for the Vixens. What does this achievement mean to you? Oh, I think playing 100 games in any sport is an amazing achievement. But for me to be able to do it for one club, um, the Vixens is just so amazing. And yeah, I'm, it's something I'm really proud of. You're very, very competitive. And unfortunately, this year... The on-court results didn't go our way. What have you got to say to our wonderful members and fans that are tuning in tonight and looking forward already to 2022? Yeah, I guess um, 2021, it was less than ideal for us on a performance measure, but there has been some amazing growth in our group. And I think that's something our fans and supporters can really look forward to. And we were also able to play in front of our home crowd after what was a really long period of time. So I guess a lot of us can't wait to do that again next year. And you were a joint runner-up in the middle last year. Who is your tip to win this year's medal? <laughs> Oh, I am actually probably going to go with Maui Kamwenda. She obviously backed herself in just before, so she's feeling very confident and she has had a pretty good season. I think it's going to be close. It's either going to be her or Kate Maloney, I think. Two of the loudest, most competitive players out on court, and that's coming from me. That is coming from you, but it, also, it takes one to know one sometimes, Joe. So it's great to have you here this evening. Congratulations. 100 fantastic games for the Vixens. We look forward to many, many more in the future. Congratulations to all of our debutantes and our milestone achievements throughout the year. Loved having them all part of our team. One last thing before we move on to our awards for this evening. It is a very special guest who has been waiting to talk to us 
Ladies and gents, it's a very special welcome to our Melbourne Vixens head coach, Simone McInnes, OAM. Simone, good evening. Great to have you here. The season didn't necessarily go as planned, but how do you look back? And what are some of the learnings and the takeaways that we've got after this season? Oh, look, no doubt it was one of the most challenging seasons that we've, we've all been a part of. And I, and I and I know everyone will agree with me from within the group that we were all bitterly disappointed with the results across the year. But, um, you know, pardon? You're just chatting but, away to yourself at the moment, Simone. Keep going. You're going beautifully. I'm on, I'm, I'm not on mute. You are not. We are hearing you beautifully, loud and clear. And now, of course, now you've turned yourself on to mute, Simone. This is quite unbelievable. This is our head coach, ladies and gentlemen. This is the lady who is in charge of our troops throughout the course of so many seasons, has led us to premierships. And here we are, not quite knowing when and when not to press the mute button. Simone, unbelievable. This is, this is a different sort of leadership that we're seeing from you here this evening. Oh, give me a break. It's been a hard year. But... <laughs> it has been a hard year. But there are, there are plenty of takeaways. Just tell us a little bit about what you spoke to our, our squad at the end of 2021. Everyone's competitive. Everyone's passionate for the Vixens. What did you speak about at the end of the season? Look, we spoke about, acknowledged that we we're all bitterly disappointed about the season, the results across the season. And, we, and, and it was disappointing. The players were hurt. The players were in pain because of the results and that's because they really care about the club. They really care, care, care about their members and they really care about our supporters. So there was a lot of pain and hurt there from the season. But one thing for the year that did it really did shine a light on for me was that the quality of the people that we have involved in the club, whether it be the athletes, the staff, you know, that were with us in the hubs or that were back home with Netball Vic or, or VIS, we have an amazing quality people and in really tough times, it can really pull teams apart, but we stuck really strong together and, and we fought hard and we stuck together right towards the end. And I think that holds us in really good stead for, for 2022. You know, I can, um, you have a committed group of athletes there now and people that are working and planning already looking towards 2022. Although the latter this year wasn't pretty, um, I don't think we're far off being contenders. We're only a little bit off being contenders again in 2022, and, and that's our focus. And we want to provide our supporters again, and hopefully in, back in John Kane Arena, we want to provide our supporters and our members and our fans with lots to celebrate in 2022. I was going to ask you about when the planning turns to 2022. Of course, we are celebrating all things 2021 tonight. Can you just give us a little insight into what we can look forward to next season? Oh, look, definitely the, the process starts now. There is a big, a bit of time on that review and that reflection part of, of this year and, and what we need to take out of this year and what we need to learn. But already, you know, the focus to, turns towards the next season and the pre-season and certainly that preparation. I think everyone's really aware that we want to have the best pre-season and that preparation. And, and that started this week. We had the whole squad was in this week doing testings and screenings and all about looking at the different areas and of focus for the for this off season and this pre-season. Um, and you know there are big learnings from this year and we have to use that hurt and that disappointment that drives us to better and bigger and better things for next year. Can't wait to see it. There's going to be no stone left unturned, I would have thought, if you're in charge, Simone. Thank you to you and, of course, all of your coaching staff for the wonderful support that you've given our athletes throughout the year. Sit back, relax and enjoy the Cheryl McMahon medal. Thank you so much for joining us. Great to have our head coach, Simone McInnes, OEM, join us online, even though it took a little while to be able to actually hear what she had to say. Time for us to turn to our first award for the evening, and it is the Rookie of the Year Award. This award is presented to an individual that has contributed to the team's culture that hasn't been on the team for any longer than two seasons and has not played more than eight matches in the previous season. The winner of the 2021 Rookie of the Year Award is Hannah Mundy. 
At the beginning of 2021, Hannah was turning up to training as a squad member. Little did she know that in April, she'd get the call up into the starting seven, replacing her idol, Liz Watson. Since that moment, Hannah has taken on the challenge with open arms and a positive, competitive and humble attitude. Her performances throughout the season continued to build, where she was able to improve and grow, beating some strong opposition along the way. Congratulations, Hannah. Can't wait to see what the future has in store for us all. Congratulations on winning our Rookie of the Year Award. And amazingly, her mum actually had a full bottle of champagne handed over, probably the first time that's ever happened. Our next award is the Outstanding Service Award. This award is voted on by all players and support staff and is awarded to someone who has significantly contributed to the development of the team. This year, the winner of the award has provided great support to the athletes and staff across another difficult season and has continued to represent the team in line with the Vixens' values. This year, the Outstanding Service Award was a tie. Our joint winners of the Outstanding Service Award, Lisa Taylor and John Tascone. We all know Lisa as the mum of the team, and without her, the bibs aren't clean, the players aren't fed, and sometimes they're not even on the court. Lisa's organisation of all things Vixen, especially this year, in getting 20 players and staff around the country has been invaluable. And we thank Lisa for all of her efforts and love. JT's the guy behind the muscles, the big guns of the Vixens. As the strength and conditioning coach of the team, he works hard to keep the fitness of the players to an elite standard, whether they're on the court, in the gym, or returning through rehab. Not only is he very good at his job, he is simply just a great bloke. Always up for a laugh, even at his own expense, it's fair to say. A big hello also to John's mum, who's turned into the Vixens' number one fan as well, and no doubt watching this evening and proud of her boy. Congratulations to both Lisa and John, Outstanding Service Award winners, and rightly so as well. Next up is the Excellence in Life and Sport Award, or the Excellence in Sport and Life Award. This award is presented to a player deemed to have demonstrated a balanced lifestyle as determined by the Vixens management team, coaching and support staff. The winner of the 2021 Excellence in Sport and Life Award is Ali Smith. Juggling life on the road wasn't easy, but throw working remotely around training and games and Ali Smith absolutely conquered it. Dedicated to both her work and life as a Vixen, it was a well-balanced year by Ali. And all done with a smile on her face, even had a chance to make some TikToks along the way as well, which we know is a vital part of the Vixens team as well. Congratulations, Ali. Sensational achievement. Our winner of the Excellence in Sport and Life Award. Our next award for this evening is the Coaches Award. This award is voted on by the coaching staff and is presented to an athlete that has shown significant growth on court in both competition and training throughout the year. The winner of the 2021 Coaches Award is Kate Maloney. This is getting a little spot on camera as well. Congratulations, Kate, your commitment, drive, and leadership throughout another very challenging season, both off season, both on and off the court, really shone through. Kate continued to give everything she could at every match and training session, every challenge that team, that team threw away. Kate led and supported those around her. Congratulations, Kate, winning the Coach's Award. We may have to send a care package to Emily Mannix, but well done to Kate Maloney, the winner of the Coach's Award. I'd actually like to get Kate to jump on if she can because it is time to present our next award and it's an award that's not handed out every year. So, Kate, if you wouldn't mind, I know you're there. We just saw you get presented with your awards from your mum. Kate, it's over to you for our next award. Thanks, Ben. You've thrown me a little bit with that. I was surprised. Um, but, yeah, I do have the privilege here and I think it goes without saying the last two years have been absolutely crazy. And we saw in that video earlier, we have been all over the place, dodging lockdowns, restrictions, and just trying to keep this season going. So for us to get on court, sometimes it was tough um, and it took some tireless work from behind the scenes. And while we were traveling, we were lucky enough to have our general manager, 
Rebecca Webster with us, who was constantly in on those conversations, supporting us and giving us all of the updates as they came in. And I can tell you now, sometimes they were several times a day with multiple flight changes, game changes, and sometimes we didn't even know if we were playing. So somehow she always managed to get all of our staff, our players to where they needed to be and now back home. She is the absolute backbone of everything that we do. A lot of the time it's us players and coaches that are seen out on court, but it's people like Beck that make our club. They make our club so special and a place that you want to be around all the time. And we wouldn't be the club that we are without Beck. Honestly, there is no way that we can repay her for the work that she has put in over the last two years. Um, all the hours throughout the night and the support that she gives to all of us. And I know she's not going to like this limelight um, being the humble person that she is. But the Team Spirit Award is um, something that's not awarded every year. Uh, and Beck has no idea she is getting this. It's an award that is presented to someone who goes above the outstanding service. Um, she lives and breathes our values at the Melbourne Vixens. And without them, our team simply couldn't do what we do. So tonight, we want to make history and we want to present Rebecca Webster with the Team Spirit Award for 2021 for everything that she has done for us, especially over the last two years. Congratulations, Beth. Beautifully spoken, Kate. Thank you so much. Not even not every day you can throw Kate and then have Beck Webster as the focus because she absolutely hates the limelight but is more than deserving on this occasion. The winner of the Team Spirit Award is Rebecca Webster, a small token of the team's gratitude for all the hard work that Beck does on a regular basis. Congratulations to all of our award winners so far this evening. Certainly some great achievements thrown in there. And it brings us to the time of the night where we commence the vote count for each Suncorp Super Netball match throughout the 2021 season. After each home and away match throughout the season, all three coaches awarded three, two and one vote for the players that they consider to be the best on court. That means there's a maximum of 18 votes available each round. However, not all 18 points must be awarded every match. The votes are then tallied at the end of the season and the athlete with the most votes is awarded the Sherelle McMahon medal. A runner-up prize is also awarded to the athlete who receives the second highest amount of votes and in the event of a tie, two or more athletes will be recognised as joint winners. Netball Victoria President Kiralee Zimmerman will have the honours of reading the votes for our first four matches. But before Kiralee does that, let's take a look at some of the highlights for round one to four. Our first home game at John Kane Arena and a grand final rematch. Round one against the Fever was certainly a day to remember. Nice little combination for the Melbourne Vixens. Unfortunately, the Vixens were unable to get over the line, eventually falling to the Fever by 14 goals. Halia Stanton, Ruby Barkmeyer and Hannah Mundy all took the court for the first time in the Vixens' dress, with all three looking right at home in the navy. Oh, that is pinpoint. Katie Ann Dehaney started the year in stunning fashion with some dazzling displays in defence. Oh, Dehaney again! <laughs> wow. Kate Maloney was combative in the midcourt as always. In round two, the Vixens took on the Sunshine Coast Lightning at John Kane Arena and almost took the chocolates in a thrilling game, falling just short by five goals. Joe Weston had four game balls and four deflections while KD backed up her excellent first round with another two intercepts and three game balls. Kalia Stanton and Hannah Mundy looked more comfortable on court. MJ electrified the crowd with one of the great plays of the season, falling out of play and recovering with lightning speed. Wind up, punch up the crowd. Round three saw the Vixens travel to the brand new Ken Roseville Arena to face the New South Wales Swifts. Looking to retain the Sergeant McInnes Cup, Unfortunately, it wasn't the Vixens' day, as they fell to the Swifts by 12 goals. A slow start saw the Vixens up against it from the outset, and the Swifts took control of the game. Katie Ann Dehaney battled hard defensively, and MJ Wender showed her versatility out in goal attack in the second half. Both these players would also suffer mild injury scares, but Vixens fans were relieved to learn neither were serious. A spirited Vixens outfit fell to the GWS Giants in round four, 
giving the crowd at John Kane Arena plenty to cheer about despite the 14-goal loss. All players contributed across the board in a performance which showed more energy and grip than previous weeks. M. Mannix had her best game of the year so far, with three intercepts, four gained balls and two deflections, whilst Hannah Mundy and Joe Weston also played solid defensive games. Yes, Mundy, well done! MJ ensured the 5,000 plus in attendance were on their feet, and Kalia Stanton played a really strong game with her movement and creative passing. Unfortunately, despite her fantastic game, Emily sustained a finger injury that would sideline her in the coming weeks. Round one, Melbourne Vixens versus West Coast Fever. Three votes, Katie Ann Dehaney. Seven votes, Joe Weston. Eight votes, Kate Maloney. Round two, Melbourne Vixens versus Sunshine Coast Lightning. One vote, Ruby Barkmeyer. One vote, Ali Smith. Two votes, Joe Weston. Five votes, Maui Kamwenda. Nine votes, Kate Maloney. Round three, New South Wales Swifts versus Melbourne Vixens. One vote, Ali Smith. One vote, Katie Ann Dehaney. Two votes, Joe Weston. Seven votes, Kate Maloney. Seven votes, Maui Kamwenda. Round four, Melbourne Vixens versus Giants. Four votes, Hannah Mundy. Five votes, Kate Maloney. Nine votes, Maui Kamwenda. Let's now take a look at the highlights from round five to eight. Where do we even start with round five? A first win for the season in Indigenous round, a sensational debut for Rani Samerson, and a super shot after the siren to seal the win. The Queensland Firebirds pushed the Vixens the entire way in a thrilling contest, with Samerson showing unbelievable confidence in her first game. Obviously trying to crawl this confidence of this young lady. <laughs> the Vixens were gritty and determined across the board and looked a different side from weeks past, putting their body on the line at every occasion. Katie Ann Dehaney took a game-changing intercept with just seconds to go to set up Samerson for the game-winning shot and all the players played with incredible heart to record a memorable victory. The Vixens remained in Queensland for their round six home game against the Thunderbirds at USC Stadium. The match was a scrappy and hotly contested affair. Unfortunately, the Vixens couldn't quite close the deal, falling by six goals to the spirited Adelaide side. Katie Ann Dehaney continued her sensational form with yet another brilliant game, ending the match with six games, four deflections and four intercepts. The Vixens rued a lack of consistency across the four quarters and were unable to find the spark that saw them defeat the Firebirds the week prior. Round seven saw the Vixens face Collingwood in the Melbourne Derby in Sydney. The game was moved to Ken Rosewell Arena due to COVID restrictions in Victoria, forcing both Melbourne teams out. An uncharacteristic performance from the Vixens saw them drop the game by 16 goals. Head coach Simone McInnes pulled no punches in her assessment of the game, challenged the group to regroup, reset after bye week. Our round eight clash against the West Coast Fever at Nissan Arena was one to remember for the 100 gamer MJ Kumwenda, 50 gamer Halia Stanton. Whilst the Vixens couldn't quite get the job done on the night, going down by 14 to the championship favourites, Captain Courageous Kate Maloney could hold her head high working tirelessly to cause turnovers all game. An impressive effort after coming off a short four day break. Round five, Queensland Firebirds versus Melbourne Vixens. Four votes, Katie Ann Dehaney. Five votes, Mwai Kamwinda. Nine votes, Rani Samerson. Round six, Melbourne Vixens versus Adelaide Thunderbirds. Four votes, Joe Weston. Five votes, Mai Comwinda. Nine votes, Katie Ann Dehaney. Round seven, Collingwood Magpies versus Melbourne Vixens. One vote, Kate Maloney. Five votes, Katie Ann Dehaney. Six votes, Mai Comwinda. Round eight, West Coast Fever versus Melbourne Vixens. One vote, Kalia Stanton. One vote, Hannah Mundy. One vote, Joe Weston. 
six votes, Mike Omwinder, and nine votes, Kate Maloney. And back to you, Pete. Thank you to Kiralee and Rosie for that. Some big numbers in the first few rounds. So let's take a look at the leaderboard of the Sheryl McMahon medal as it stands after round eight. You can see with Joe Weston on 16 votes, Katie Ann Haney with 22 votes, a really impressive start to the season. Now top two, skipper Kate Maloney with 39 votes and MJ from Wenda, 43 votes. During last year's award, Kate was sitting on 34 votes at this point in the season and managed to take home the award. There are only four votes separating Kate and MJ early on. This may well go down to the wire. So we'll have to wait and see. Time now to take a look at some of the highlights from rounds 9 to 11. And then we'll hear from Melbourne Vixens legend, Sherelle McMahon, with the rounds votes. Back in front of a home crowd at John Kane Arena, round nine saw the Vixens pull off an emphatic performance to overcome the top of the table Sunshine Coast Lightning, marking their first win in Melbourne since 2019. Halia Stanton starred, backing herself in at the post, whilst Emily Mannix got to work in her first game back from injury. Though the Lightning led by seven goals at half time, the Vixens worked relentlessly to reduce the deficit, pulling away with a three goal advantage before the final whistle blew. Last has beaten first, Melbourne wins! The Vixens had their work cut out for them in round 10 against an informed Swift's outfit, although MJ pulled together an unbelievable final quarter performance, nailing eight super shots and remaining fearless until the end, it simply wasn't enough to get over the line. There was plenty of upside for the group though, with Ali Smith making her mark on the game right away, using her speed and vision down the court to execute some very clever play. The whirlwind Super Netball season continued in round 11, with late fixture changes forcing the Vixens to pack up and head to South Australia. Facing Collingwood at Netball SA Stadium, this Melbourne derby was a tight, scrappy encounter. And despite Phil and assistant coach Lizzie Watson's best efforts, it was the Magpies who came away with the bragging rights. Though Hannah Mundy put her body on the line, amassing a whopping 35 feeds, 16 goal assists and an intercept, the final turn allowed the Pies to swoop in and capitalise fully. Round nine, Sunshine Coast Lightning versus the Melbourne Vixens. Two votes, Hannah Mundy. Two votes, Kate Maloney. Six votes, Emily Mannix. And eight votes, Kalia Stanton. On to round 10 now, the Melbourne Vixens versus the New South Wales Swifts. Two votes, Ali Smith. Two votes, Joe Weston. Two votes, Maui Kamwenda. Three votes, Katie Ann Dehaney. And nine votes, Kate Maloney. Round 11, Melbourne Vixens versus the Collingwood Magpies. Four votes, Hannah Mundy. Five votes, Kate Eddy and nine votes, Joe Weston. Thanks for that, Sherelle. We heard some very similar, uh, familiar names throughout that section. Let's take a look at the leaderboard now, as it stands after round 11, with just three matches to go. And we look towards the top, and it's KA is on 25 votes, Joe Weston with 27 votes, MJ 45 votes, but the lead has been stolen by the skipper, as Kate goes for back-to-back -back Sherelle McMahon medals, she's on 50 votes. Just five votes in it with three matches to play. So let's not waste any time and find out who will take out the title of 2021 Sherelle McMahon medalist. Here are the highlights and the votes from our last three matches, round 12 through to round 14. With Nissan Arena as our new home, the Vixens came out firing in their round 12 clash against the Giants. Oh, yes! As Emily Mannix and MJ shone at both ends of the court. Joe Weston also had a substantial impact with six games, five deflections, four rebounds, and an intercept. Despite the electrifying start, the group pulled up just short in the end. 
struggling to convert at key moments and succumbing to a nine-goal loss. Vixens fans MVP Hannah Mundy was stellar once again on an afternoon that was otherwise disappointing. Round 13 played host to some more exceptional Vixens milestones as Joe Weston and Kate Eddy celebrated their 150th National League games respectively. Up against the Thunderbirds and clearly motivated by the occasion, both players brought the heat, amassing a total of eight deflections between them. Emily Mannix was also forced to be reckoned with, notching up seven game balls and five intercepts. However, a strong start from the Thunderbirds made it hard for us to claw our way back into the contest, amounting to another nine goal loss. It was a fierce, fearless and ferocious contest between the Vixens and Queensland Firebirds in round 14. Goalers Kaylia Stanton and NJ came out of the blocks flying, guiding the side to a three goal lead by quarter time. A Firebirds fight back then ensued before Ruby Barkmeyer was injected into the game assisting the Vixens in winning the third quarter. Despite a gallant final term effort, the Vixens were ultimately served a full goal defeat, capping off a disappointing but valuable season for the group. One that is sure to set us up for future success. Round 12, Giants netball versus the Melbourne Vixens. One vote, Joe Weston. Two votes, Emily Mannix. Seven votes, Maui Kamwenda. Eight votes, Hannah Mundy. Round 13, Adelaide Thunderbirds versus the Melbourne Vixens. Four votes, Emily Mannix. Five votes, Maui Kamwenda. And nine votes, Kate Maloney. Round 14, the Melbourne Vixens versus the Queensland Firebirds. One vote, Emily Mannix. One vote, Katie Ander Haney. One vote, Joe Weston. Seven votes, Maui Kamwenda. And eight votes, Kate Maloney. Well, there you have it, Pete. That's the voting done for the last round. Over to you to announce the winner. Thanks so much, Sherelle. Beautifully done. Some wonderful highlights in there. Despite not getting the results that we're after, there's still some fantastic plays by our Melbourne Vixens athletes this season. That brings to an end the vote count for the 2021 season. So now it's time to announce the Sherelle McMahon medalist and the runner-up. Family members at home, please get ready with the necessary celebrations and presentations. Only three votes separated our top two athletes this season. It has definitely come down to the last match or two. The runner-up in the Sherelle McMahon medal for season 2021 with 64 votes is our star Malawian shooter, Maui Kumwenda. Oh, straight back. Brilliant play by Kamwenda. Oh, that is pinpoint. When MJ Kamwenda pumps up the crowd, Kamwenda follows her own work and she'll have another crack at it. Oh, and now she's hunting on. Oh, yes. Well, you couldn't miss the scream. You could hear it from the sunny coast. But Mundy had to get it there. And didn't she what? Congratulations, MJ, our runner-up for season 2021. It was a challenging season, but you were a shining light, an inspiration every week in our goal third. Congratulations. How does it feel to be runner-up in the Sherelle McMahon for 2021? Uh, thank you all so much. Um, I am very, I'm very honoured and I'm speechless. <laughs> um, and I just wanted to thank... Uh, coaches and my teammates 
uh, because without them, I couldn't win this award. And also I need to thank everyone who are supporting me to go through this, to reach this far. Thank you so much. Well done, MJ. We're all so proud of you. We know that your family would be so proud of you as well. No doubt you are, can't wait to see them and also show off the runners-up trophy that you've done. What does it mean to, to you? You always speak so glowingly of your sisters in the Melbourne Vixens, but also your, your family, of course, back home as well. What does this mean to, to you and your family? Uh, it means a lot to me. And uh, some of my family, they're watching you in Malawi. Uh, so they are, they'll be proud of me. Yeah, it means a lot. Well, congratulations. <laughs> well done. What a season it was. And also a season which saw you complete 100 National League matches. We hope there are many, many more to come and you can light up our goal circle again next year. Congratulations on being our runner-up in the 2021 Sherelle McMahon medal. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. What a deserving award winner. MJ is just an absolute sensation our runner-up for this year. Of course, it is the moment that we've been waiting for, the Sherelle McMahon medalist for season 2021, who gets to take home a gift voucher, trophy and a newly designed necklace. With 67 votes, our back-to-back -back Sherelle McMahon medalist is our captain, Kate Maloney. Before we have a chat with our winner, let's take a look at the final leaderboard for the 2021 Sherelle McMahon medal. And pretty much votes across the board for all of our athletes this year, but two absolute standouts at the top. We see Katie Ann with 26 votes, Joe Wesson with 29, MJ 64 votes, and Kate Maloney with 67 votes. Our skipper is ready for a quick chat. She is our back-to-back -back Sherelle McMahon medalist. Kate, congratulations. You are our winner for the second consecutive season. How does it feel to be a back-to-back -back Sherelle McMahon medalist? Thanks, Pete. Um, yeah, it, it is nice. It, it was a surprise and it was super close there at the end, but I suppose in what had been a really tough and challenging season for us, just super proud of the way our girls stuck together and, yeah, can't wait for next year. As competitive as you are, and I know you just like winning at absolutely everything you do, did you actually think that you were a chance to win this award tonight? I know we spoke a little bit earlier and you're a very humble champion, don't worry about that, but did you think after the season that you had that you were a chance to win? It looks like that. It looks like the video has just gone down there. I think I'm not sure if your mum's paid the internet bill, Kate, but you need to make sure that you've sorted that out. We're going to try and pick up if we can find oh, another you know, connection. Oh, I something just completely. <laughs> okay. No, Kate's back. Me, I think we're back. I'll tell you what, there is one thing that we can always do, Kate. When the connection is good, we can always hear your voice. Don't worry about that. Are you back? Has Denise paid the bill? That's the key. Yeah, no, you're back. Here we go. <laughs> it's back, it's I'm working back. again. I'm blaming dad, actually, for that one. So uh, I had his phone going and, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, look, I, I honestly didn't know who was going to win tonight. MJ was pretty confident in herself earlier, so I thought it might go to her and I thought Joey would be up there as well. You're a very social lady. You get around, you know what's going on. You're in charge of the team. You're looking after all of these things. But you've won back-to-back -back Sherelle McMahon medals, both of them with Hub Life. Maybe Hub Life suits you, Kate. <laughs> uh, yeah, I actually do enjoy Hub Life and, and it was really different to last year, you know, um, having all that success 
uh, and being in a hub. And then obviously this year, the challenges that we were faced so many times. And that, you know what, the great thing about this group was though, we still enjoyed our time away in that hub. And I think in, at, at those challenging times have brought us together. And I think that's gonna hold us in really good stead going forward. We can't wait for 2022 already, or even though we are celebrating tonight, 2021. Just talk us through some of the challenges. You, you speak of the, the challenges. You always do it with a smile on your face, as competitive as you and your coach and your teammates are as well. How was it on and off the court this year, knowing that what everything we went through last year, we thought we'd put a full stop to it. And then, of course, it reared its ugly head again this year. Just what were some of the challenges? And how did you do it as a leader? How did you deal with that? Yeah, let's just hope that we get to play our home games at John Kane Arena. I know playing those first couple this season, there was nothing more special than that drive to John Kane and being able to step out on court in front of our Melbourne Vixens fans. And um, we can't wait to hopefully play a normal season. But this year, it threw so many curveballs at us. I think last year we had the certainty of being away for so long, whereas this time it was you're going here, quickly pack your bags and then to chuck in um, some really disappointing performances um, that was something that, you know, we're not used to as a Melbourne Vixens group. We hold ourselves to really high standards. We expect to be playing finals and um, we're not there this year. And watching the game on Saturday um, is going to be tough because that's where we want to be. And, you know, that's our motivation going forward for 2022. But um, I think Simone said it earlier, as many challenges we had, this group just kept fighting and fighting and it brought us closer and closer together. And we got, we have so many amazing people within our club, players and staff that just jump on board at any change. And I'm really proud of that. You're a sensational leader. No doubt there's some people that you would like to thank because I know that even though this is an individual award, you've got some great people around you. Yeah, and I have my mum waving in the background. So I'll thank, uh, first and foremost, my family who have been absolutely amazing. My mum, my dad, my brother and my sister. Um, no matter what the circumstances is, win, lose or draw, they've supported me the whole way. And I'm so lucky to have them. Um, to our Melbourne Vixens fans, who I said before, just to be able to run out on court in front of you guys for a few games this year was amazing. And we can't wait to do that more next year. To all of our sponsors at the Melbourne Vixens, uh, you support us through thick and thin and we wouldn't be able to do what we do without you. To everyone at Netball Victoria, um, Rosie, Beck, I don't know how you got us out on court. I don't you know how you got us from state to state and we are so lucky to have you guys leading us. Um, to the support staff at the Melbourne Vixens, you know, I am so proud to be a part of this club and you guys go above and beyond on a daily basis to make sure that we are ready to go game day. Um, to our coaches, Simone, Sherelle, Di, uh, I don't know what else to say about you guys. You go above and beyond for each and every one of us athletes and you support us so much and we're so lucky and grateful to have you guys. And finally to... Um, the amazing Melbourne Vixens athletes who, you know, I'm so grateful to get to um, train with every day, to walk into training, win, lose or draw and to be able to see them work as hard as they do. It just brings so much motivation to me and what I do. And, um, yeah, so much to thank to all of the girls and, and the whole Melbourne Vixens club. So thank you, everyone. What a leader and what a champion. Ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are around this country or the world, whatever you're drinking, let's stand up and give a toast to our back-to-back -to -back Sherelle McMahon medalist. To Kate Maloney, congratulations. Well done. What a champion she is, a humble leader, a wonderful champion. As you can see, everyone having a glass. And even Kate is indulging in a little glass of bubbles as well, which is sensational to see and more than well deserved after another sensational individual season. Before we wrap up for the night, it is my pleasure now to throw to Netball Victoria and Melbourne Vixens Chief Executive Officer for a quick word. It is over to Rosie King. Thank you. And before I hand back to Peter to conclude the night, I wanted to take the opportunity to say a few words. Now, Kira Lee has already spoken about the frenetic pace, the pressure and the challenges of keeping the season going. We know that it took its toll on people and we don't take that for granted. 
I particularly want to thank the teams, including the athletes and the support staff, each and every one of you for doing what you did and with such good grace. I've wondered what it is that makes people step into a situation that they know will not only challenge them, but will be hard to cope with and that they probably won't like. I've also wondered if you would go as willingly into that situation if it was only for yourself as opposed to for yourself and for your team. My belief is that when you know that you are contributing to an outcome that's bigger than just you, it propels you to make big, selfless, brave decisions that are for the greater good. Now, I recall speaking with Kate Maloney during last year's Hub in Queensland and asking how everyone was going. Kate talked me through what was happening and ended up saying, of course, Rosie, it helps when you're winning. Now, this year we didn't win many and I knew that that would be impacting the team. But that said, I believe that you would all have learned more about yourself and more about your teammates this year than you did last year. So rather than putting this year behind you or trying to erase the worst of it from your memory banks, I ask that you reflect and remember it as one of the greatest opportunities to grow that you will have in your career. Now, I wasn't able to be at your last grand final appearance, but I promise you that I will be at your next, and I know that that will be very soon. In fact, I'm predicting a wonderful breakout year in 2022. So bring it on, enjoy your break, see you soon, and go Vixens. Bring it on indeed. A huge thank you to Rosie King for joining us our CEO of Netball Victoria and the Melbourne Vixens. Well, that brings an end to the formalities of the evening. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been great to see so many people join us online. All their smiling faces, everyone relaxed in their home and all dressed up as well, which has been sensational as we celebrated the Melbourne Vixens season. And of course, our 2021 Sherelle McMahon medalist, Kate Maloney. Congratulations again to all of our award recipients this evening, to our fans, Thank you for your support throughout 2021. And we can't wait to be playing in front of you at our home court in 2022. We hope everyone is staying safe and staying healthy in the current environment. Thank you so much for joining us virtually this evening. Hopefully we'll get to celebrate in person again very, very soon. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a very good evening from me. Thank you so much for joining us. Good night and go fix it. Australia. Meet your new McCafe blend. Roasted and blended in Melbourne. Smoother, richer and crafted for Aussies who love great coffee. The new McCafe blend. Now that's coffee fit for an Aussie. Too many days in the darkness Without a glimpse of the light Running tired and broken and scared But I swear I'll never give up the fight I see you broken